right, now that we have this piece done and this group made, we have all the kind of components that we need. Now we're going to repurpose this to uh, build the other kind of pieces that we need. So it's going to be a little bit of uh, moving these parts around and kind of, you know, repurposing them in some kind of way. So we'll take the front group, we'll duplicate that, and we'll hit Control D. And just like we did with that pattern at the very beginning, we're back to this mode now where we'll hold down J and then rotate this thing into place. And remember, I took that whole group and we went under modify and we froze uh, the transformations and we actually moved the pivot point uh, so it's in the center and then we just did um, freeze transformations on that. And so that's why we're able to have that pivot point in the center and just kind of rotate this thing back. Now we can change the name of this front group to back group. And because we duplicated it in this uh, front underscore gr, it my doesn't like anything to be named the same thing, so it's going to put a one at the end. So we'll go to the end of that and get rid of that. So now we got a front group and a back group, just like that, and we've got our spacing kind of set up for that. We'll take the front group, we'll duplicate it, and we'll hit Control D, and then we can name this uh, left like that, and go tap the arrow key to go to the end there, and just hit backspace, and now we got a left group. And now we can hold down J, and then we can rotate this thing into place like this. Now I know for the crate that I was building, I didn't want this center piece like this, so I'll just select it, and we can just hit uh, backspace to get rid of it completely like this. And um, now we've got this kind of interesting thing going on where we've got these boards that are too, too big for this. Um, what we can do for these boards that we see here, we can move these and we'll uh, select it, hold down X, and we'll just uh, snap this into place, moving it over like this, and we'll take this one, hold down X, and then move it into place like that. So that's pretty uh, simple for those boards. Now what we got to do for the top ones is a little bit more difficult. Um, we had to take the verts and we had to snap them over to this thing here. But if you remember what we did before in the last video, if we just hit F9, we can select these verts that we have here, like this. We want the pivot point to be on the um, very outer part of this, so we'll just tap D to move the pivot point, hold down V, and then snap to the edge there like that. We'll double click on the move tool and go to move and snap settings, make sure retain component spacing is on for this part, um, so we can tap uh, D to go back into the move part, and we'll hold down um, V to turn on vert snap, snap to verts, and we'll just move it along this axis until we kind of snap up to these points right here. So I'll hold down V and then move it right there like that. So you can see that's uh, not too difficult. It's just kind of remembering we're going to drag it along through here, tap D to move our pivot point, hold down V. Oops, sorry, I accidentally hit spacebar. We'll hold down V and move it along right through here, snapping through there, and then tap D to get back. Now I'll hold down V to snap right to these verts that you see here. And let's go down to the bottom piece here. Now select it like that. Drag a marquee around all these guys. Tap D. Hold down V to snap that pivot point. Tap D to go back into the regular move mode. Hold down V and then move along this axis and then move it right to that point that's there. And sorry about that. I keep accidentally grabbing the spacebar instead of Alt. And we'll grab this right here like this. We'll tap D, hold down V, snap to this point here, tap D to go back into the regular moving mode, hold down V, and click, and then drag right there like that. So that wasn't uh, too difficult, right? Um, let's take a look at this in through here. I do know that for this pattern, I know this might be just getting a little, a little silly about some of this stuff, but... Um, I don't like how these uh, boards kind of overlap like this. So I, I know that we can take this and hold down X and then move it right there like that. And then we could take each one of these boards and hold down X and then move them over slightly like this. Through there. And my thinking is I, I want this to actually make a uh, physical sense because then later on when we build the game res mesh off of this high res mesh that we're building, uh, everything can kind of make sense for where everything kind of snaps up and joins together. So now we've got a left group 
and uh, the pivot point should be in the center like that. Um, we could freeze the transformations for it because we've got rotation on there. We don't have to. Now we can duplicate that, hit Control D like this, and we can uh, put on the rotate tool E, hold down J, and we can snap rotate this thing um, and say 270 like that and change the name from left to right underscore and then do group like that okay so now we've got uh, the front left right and the back and we're moving along pretty quick here um, now I would like to go ahead and build uh, the top part of this so we're gonna take um, let's take the left group and duplicate that hit control D and let's rotate it into place hold down J and then rotate this 100 uh, no, I'm sorry 90 degrees like this We'll put on the move tool, hold down X, and we can snap this thing to be in place for us right here like this. Now this board's in place and we're good to go on this one. And now we've got to take this board and hold down X and then snap that in like this and then snap this one over like that. And when we do that, we've got this um, situation like what we got going on here where this board is too long and we would have to do that thing we did before we hit F9 and then we tap D hold down V and then snap to that part there tap D again and then hold down V and then vert snap to this right here like that now that might be a little bit hard for you to see because you know everything's shaded I kinda know what's going on because I've been doing modeling for a while you can tap 4 to see wireframe if you need to see what's going on a little bit better like that so we can tap D hold down V move this out to this point here tap D again and then we can hold down V and then snap to let's see here V and then move there all it is hit um, the 5 key to turn on shading like that so now we got um, this piece there like that this piece here like that um, I'm gonna move these guys again we'll tap 4 to show wireframe tap D hold down V snap to that right there tap D again and then hold down V and then snap to that tap 5 to go to shaded mode I'll select this right here we're gonna do the same thing tap D hold down B and I know this is like a, a little bit tedious but you know um, I do think you learn some of these modeling things through muscle memory just you gotta keep doing this stuff like over and over and over again um, I'm gonna hit F8 just go into object mode uh, we can take a look underneath here we can turn off the grid temporarily so we can kind of see what's going on underneath here now if I wanted to be really really picky about this stuff you can see that these boards that we've got going on here uh, should really be moved in here like this. So I'll hit F9. We'll do the same thing we did before with this. We'll tap D, hold down V, move it out to there, tap D again, and we'll hold down V and then snap there. And then take a look at that in the shaded mode. And we'll do this one here. We'll grab this. We'll tap D, move it out, hold down V, move it to that point there, tap D, and hold down V, and let's take a look here like this. And we got that one board. Now, I, instead of doing it for each one of those, what I'm going to do is just select these boards that you see here, delete them, get rid of them. And I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to hit Control D and put on the move tool and hold down X and then move this out like this and if you remember from the last video once we do that once we can hit shift uh, D and we can duplicate with that transform like that until we get all the boards that we need going all the way across just like that okay so um, the other thing we could do is um, we could put another cross pattern on top here. I'll leave that up to you. If you want to do that, go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it uh, kind of blank like what you see there. So this will become a top group like this. And let's go ahead and duplicate the whole thing. Control D. 
Um, what I could do is take this thing and say modify freeze transformations, modify reset transformations like that, and that's going to put that pivot point back down to the center of the world. Turn my grid back on. You can always turn that on and off with this right here. We'll put on the rotate tool. So we'll tap E or you can click this here and hold down J and then rotate and snap that 180 degrees. And then we'll put on the move tool and then we can hold down X and then drag up for this and get it into the right spot. And we'll turn this off here. And now you can see what we've got going on here for this whole thing. And we can take the whole group and hit control G like that and call this crate GR for crate group. And then we've got this whole new pivot point that lets us like rotate the thing and move it around. It kind of acts as if it's um, a single object now at this point, which is kind of cool. So let me turn this off here like this. We'll go ahead and turn on the screen space ambient inclusion. Now I was getting a bit of slowdown. Like I said, I was recording a video, but um, I showed you guys you can go to the option box for that, and you could maybe bump the samples down a little bit. That seemed to give me better performance, and I put this on to 8. So everything looks pretty good. Let's see if I put it on 16 like that. That's where I'm starting to get a bit of the slowdown, which is kind of uh, kind of interesting that it's actually some of this anti-aliasing stuff. But that together with the screen space and inclusion um, should get a pretty nice shot of this and what this looks um, like geometry-wise. Now, the other thing is if you want to show some wireframes inside of Maya, something that we could do pretty quickly is just take our crate group, make a new um, layer group like what we did earlier in the video for our scale reference. Uh, we can call this uh, crate layer. So I'll go over here like this and underscore layer. And we can give it a color of black like this and hit save. And whenever you do that, you can see whenever we got the wireframe on uh, shaded display, it's actually going to make wireframes in that particular color. So you can see it's black right now. If we wanted red wireframes, you can put it on red. I think uh, the black looks pretty good. Um, let's try white as well and see that kind of makes things stand out pretty nice as well. So white and black are pretty good options for um, showing out the wireframe. So there you go. Uh, we've got our old proxy crate and if we show that, um, you know, we can do shift H for that and you can see everything's going to fit within the, the size that we made for that proxy version and we can uh, hide that. Uh, you can see that we've got our pattern that we've made here and everything's kind of uh, lining up for the most part for our pattern. We kind of changed some of the size of some of this stuff just a little bit. I'll hit uh, control H for that. And then we've got our new high res model that we've made inside of Maya. So in order to make this crate, what you've really done is you've learned how to use some primitives. You've done some very basic stuff for booleans, being able to boolean shapes in and out. You've learned a little bit about the beveling tools. You've learned a little bit about duplication of objects with transformation on it, deleting history, making uh, groups and nested groups within there for um, moving things and then being able to move things like within a hierarchy and uh, a lot about uh, translation and rotation. Not so much on scale. We did a little bit for scale for scaling this piece down that you saw here. Um, also, you know, the space bar and tapping F will frame this thing up uh, pretty nicely just like this and get our scene into a really nice uh, order and just save it. And uh, this is a uh, you know, what you should have at this point for this uh, pretty nice high resolution looking game crate.